What up, everybody, and welcome. This is the moment you've been waiting for. A brand new episode of the Channel Chasers podcast. Boom, 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 boom. Gonna be famous forever, cause forever's too short, too short. Gonna be famous together, cause that's one more than together. Gonna be famous forever, cause forever's too short, too short. Gonna be famous together, cause that's one more than together. So what are you waiting for? Girls five ever. What's up, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Channel Chasers Podcast. I'm, of course, your host, Jay, and joining me, as always, are my two backup singers, Tony and Brian. How you doing? How you doing, fellas? I'm doing all right. All right. Hello. <laughs> right? I mean, you know, group mates, backup singers, same difference to me. Uh-huh. I mean, Jay is kind of our wiki. Exactly. Glad you know your place, Brian. All right. So, yeah. yeah. Um, this one, this one's going to be a fun episode. Because once again, we uh, we decided to call an audible. And uh, we switched things up last minute. And uh, we discovered that, like, there was a show that me and Brian had wanted to check out for a while now. All the way back when it was on Peacock. And uh, that was Girls 5 Eva. And then we realized, oh, hey, Netflix picked it back up for another season oh shit these seasons are really short we could probably catch up real fast so what if there are three seasons we could do this and here we are so and if you listen to uh last week's podcast we did announce that we were going to do it but we didn't know how much we watched yep because we could so... yeah because we weren't exactly sure because we were like this could be a new experiment where we do a, maybe just a couple seasons and then slowly catch up or we could do the whole thing turns out it was short enough where we could do the whole thing just recording a few like an hour or so late. That's yep, it's all good. But before we get into all that fun shenaniganery, we can't start an episode off without first jumping right into the news with Brian. Well, before we get into the news, we have to do our newer segment uh, in memoriam. And first of all, uh, we need to uh, make up for a mistake that we did last week because uh, we forgot to mention the passing of the legend himself, Akira Toriyama. Now, granted, this is like seven. Several, several, several weeks late by the time you hear this because we're yeah. we're a bit behind we're a bit behind in the recording schedule. So apologies in advance for that. But we still have to acknowledge it because Akira Toriyama is a legend. Dragon Ball has been such a big impact on all of our lives. I mean, you know, for our generation in particular, I don't think there would be nearly as many anime fans in the West if it wasn't for Dragon Ball. And honestly, Dragon Ball has been kind of a very foundational, uh, foundational in terms for me. Uh, uh, when it comes to like building life philosophy, you know, Goku's personal tenacity and, you know, always constant striving for personal improvement has kind of definitely been a big thing for me as well growing up. So like, you know, thank you so much to Akira Toriyama. Like not only like did you make such influential work, but you influenced several generations of creators. Shonen Jump would not be the same without you. You know, your work and lineage has been felt all throughout that magazine and all throughout the industry overall. Thank you, good sir. Rest in peace uh and like i said just you know thank you for everything you've done yes indeed and uh dragon ball was why i got into anime period like just normal dragon ball yeah it's, it's funny so many people only think of z when it comes to dragon ball but actually dragon ball is like an entire thing it's probably i would actually say the longest like right next to jojo it's the longest running series in shonen jump mm -hmm. because dragon ball and jojo are the last two series that started in the 80s and are still going to some capacity to this day yep yep because before he left akiri Toriyama did i think finish or mostly work on the new season of uh the new dragon ball he did not work on it at all actually he passed it on to his apprentice he has an apprentice wow. well, i think he still worked on it he didn't work on it he just gave notes he didn't work on it at all yeah. he just looked at that it means that he worked on it he gave it some notes. I mean, anyway, giving on it doesn't, uh, or giving notes doesn't mean you worked on it. But anyway, absolute legend will be missed. And uh, he will be missed in the video game community too, because he is his art is what gave us the most Dragon Quest. Moment. Yes, exactly. Which actually, funny enough, has its own Netflix anime out right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, uh, he'll be coming out. Uh, one of his other properties that uh, is uh, is less known. It just it came out with a short manga series like last year 
year, I believe. It's called Sandland. Uh, they're coming out with an RPG for that, I believe, in April. Mm. And I believe a new anime on Netflix. Mm -hmm. But uh, unfortunately, he's not the only one. This next one is a uh, lesser known actor, but uh, especially considering uh, our topic today, thought I'd mention him like a certain person that we'll mention later. He was one of those actors who was uh, like everywhere, but not uh, like super big. He was in the medium and, time. Uh, yes. M. Emmett Walsh. Uh, I think his first big thing was uh, he was the captain in Blade Runner. Oh, but he's oh, that's also cool. been in like Critters, The Jerk. Uh, Christmas of the Cranks, he was like the cranky old man. He works with the Cullen brothers a lot, but more recently, more recently, he's uh, been seen in stuff like Righteous Gemstones, where he was the grandpa. Oh, shit. Nice. I love Righteous Gemstones. It's hilarious. Or um, Knives Out, where he was like the groundskeeper who was like in charge of the security footage. Ah. Uh, for my fellow co-hosts. That's that's the guy. Let me see here. Oh yeah, I think I've seen I've definitely seen him before. He's worked over right. seven decades as a character actor in more than two hundred and twenty films and TV shows. Damn. Holy yep. shit. What a work ethic. Mm -hmm. yep. His IMDB page is definitely longer than a wizard's beard. Or a CVS receipt. Yes, indeed. Or but uh, uh, uh. RIP to him will be missed. Okay, so for our actual like one news story, been a bit of a slow week, so I will get Give you uh i will give you a choice do you want to hear about an update on a reboot or an unnecessary adaptation uh mm -hmm. update on a reboot okay so pirates of the caribbean okay it, oh. it was uh it was confirmed by one of tony's favorite people uh roland emmerich fuck that guy who, who if you go back has been a producer for all the pirates movies but only a producer and he's still only a producer but he has confirmed that the upcoming the upcoming reboot is going to be indeed a reboot okay cool for the pirates movie uh -huh. and i don't know if it's still going on but at one point there was a rumor that it was going to star Mar margot rock i would be down yeah. with that i'm okay with that but i think in that version she was going to be captain jack's daughter so Maybe not. Huh. Now that it's going to be like a full reboot. Okay, cool, cool. But that's it. All right, so moving on from the news, we're going to jump right into screen time. And I figured we'll start off, since we're going to be talking a lot about nostalgia today, we're going to start off by talking about <laughs> X-Men 97. We watched the first two episodes as of recording this podcast episode. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but I watched them again, still have mixed feelings. I like them. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. I have mixed feelings because I liked it, but very similar to Netflix Avatar, Avatar, the changes were just enough to really annoy me. Which is weird, because I've heard yeah, you know, every, yeah, our trio. Yeah, everybody else is saying, oh, fire, this was great. This, I, yeah, you know, it's good. I'm not saying it was bad. And it had fire elements. Yeah, there like, were definitely some dope moments, like Magneto's speech to that to the to the Senate committee. That was great. Scott, Scott doing one of the best ever superhero landings. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then and then a move that I didn't see coming until the trailer. Uh, Gambit lighting up Wolverine's claws. Yep, man. It was like, it definitely felt classic. I'm glad they didn't try to overly update everything. Like, it still feels like X-Men, the animated series. Like, they definitely picked up right where they left off. But there were just parts of it that I felt were, like, a little too modern in terms of messaging. And then one part in particular that was just like, oh, I don't think you really paid attention to what you're doing here. I know what you're going for and i like the message but maybe not with this person yikes yeah uh, but overall it's still good like i'm not shitting on it at all i think it's still pretty solid i do think people's like fears about 97 were a little overblown as per usual with the internet but i do still see some warranted apprehensiveness in terms of some of it so like you know overall still enjoyed it but not as much as i would have liked to enjoy it yeah i agree with that yeah. We're going to continue to still watch it, and we're more than likely going to cover it on the podcast. But uh, as of right now, unlike everybody else, it didn't exactly blow us away. Yeah. Uh, What other stuff did we do, homie Hangwise? We caught up on Shogun. We watched a couple episodes of Shogun still. Uh, No, mm -hmm. we're like two episodes behind. Well, we, we watched two episodes prior to the one we last recorded. Oh. Yes, that's what oh. I was referring to. Okay, because kind of our homie hang in my mind, the main show kind of dominated my brain. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, it continues to be freaking intense. There's a war brewing now. Oh, yeah, because of some dumb. 
dumbass. It's a lot of crazy shit going mm -hmm. down over there in Shogun. Uh, obviously, this this might be my favorite new show of the year so far. Yeah, it's actually well, uh, pretty, pretty damn up there. Well, yeah, it's definitely up there because it's got stiff competition, uh, especially when you realize that also new this year uh -huh. has been. Has been Percy. I'd count Percy as a this year show, even though it technically started last year. But yeah. And um, in June, we'll be getting the second season of uh, Pats the Dragon. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, this year, this year is going to be full of good TV. Mm -hmm. Yep, good entertainment in general. But, uh, uh, anything else that we watched, homie, hang wise? Uh, not really. Oh, uh, you've also got to remember that uh, this weekend we kind of didn't do any homie hangs because. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Busy. Yep, yep, yep. Life stuff. Uh, to continue updates on our Persona journey, we, uh, I have beaten Persona 4 Golden as of the last time we recorded this, and now I am currently doing a max social link run. Really enjoy Persona 4 Golden. Uh, it's I, I definitely see the hype behind it. I still hold to my earlier sentiment when I start, when I was like in the middle of the game where I said Persona 3 has my favorite story so far, but 4 has my favorite cast of characters. 4 definitely still has my favorite cast of characters. And unlike 3, there's actually more than one waifu option where I was like, I would actually go for this one too. In three, it's just like, no, it's Mitsuru all the time. <laughs> yep. Here you're Help. like, uh, yep. I can't help it. I'm leaning towards one, but all of them are cool. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. No, I mean, and... like, it, it, it's definitely the case in Golden because, like, I love Risei. I definitely think Risei is going to be is my top favorite of three. But right now, I'm going for the Naoto route because I love Naoto. She's smart. She's a detective. She has excellent taste in headwear. I always have mad respect for a lady that can rock a hat as a hat person myself. Yeah, and interestingly enough, you can actually, uh, you know, it's not as long as JoJo in terms of different parts or different uh, yep. main mainline games in the series. You could honestly name your favorite uh, JoJo story, your favorite part overall, your favorite cast, and you could do the very, you could do, very much do the same with Persona. Oh yeah, it's like, you know, our uh, shout out to our boy David who was featured in the Hasbun episode, which should be up by the time you guys hear this, so definitely go listen to that. Uh, uh, he, act, uh, I, I agree with him that actually, it's funny enough, Persona 4 and Part 4 actually line up very well because they're both a murder mystery that involves supernatural powers plaguing a small town in Japan. Yep. But one is a more, it's supernatural, yes, but more subdued. Yep. Very grounded. And the other is, well... Bizarre. Yes. More bizarre than JoJo is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep, yep, yep. JoJo, ironically enough, JoJo is more grounded than Persona in this case. It's a much more yeah. straightforward murder mystery. And if you want to go with uh, similar themes, well, part five of JoJo and Persona 5 share a tangential similarity in terms of theming. Huh, interesting. It's because part, uh, Persona 5, we have the Phantom Thieves of Heart. Oh, right. The and then we have... Giorno's gang. Or I guess well, technically Butarati's gang. Because it's technically yeah. Butarati's gang. Yep. Who are just renegade members of Passione. They want to be gang stars. Exactly. But yeah. But, uh, and to a degree, the same level of one murder, crime, and destruction. Mm-hmm. Fair, fair. Uh, other stuff. Uh, I checked out parts of the Eras tour. I didn't actually get to watch the whole thing because by the time I was at my uncle's house, they were like midway through the concert, but... I enjoyed what I got to see. Hopefully, I'll I'll actually watch the whole thing with the guys sometime soon because I do want to watch the, I do want to watch the Eras tour on Disney Plus. I swear this is not an ad. No. But hey, Disney, you know I'm, I'm always down to chill. <laughs> um. But yeah. So, uh, anything else? Uh, what about you guys? Are you, you guys any uh, got anything you wanna you wanna quickly shout out in screen time? Well, I wasn't as sociable as you guys this weekend, so I ended up watching like I hate to say it, three different movies. Dang, Brian, the way you. The what are you afraid? Of? You just sound so sad. Well, no, no. It's me trying to do self-deprecating humor and failing. But uh, um, yeah. anyway, oddly enough, this was completely on accident. But they all ended up being action movies. Okay. First of all, um, keeping up with my John Wick journey, I watched three. Oh yeah, that's the one with Halle Berry in it, right? Where she has the dogs and shit. Yep. I need to watch four. She she was awesome. Yep. It was weird to see uh, Mr. D in it. Yeah, right. Because he's Lawrence Fishburne's like right hand man. Mm -hmm. And the way it ended. Also, uh, what's up with Donnie Yen and playing blind badasses? Uh, that wasn't in three. Was really that wasn't four? I 
I always forget. Yeah, because uh, three was uh, three was about the fight at the Continental. That was the end. That and that was the one that had com. No, the one that had common Ruby Rose was three. No, that was two. That was two. See, they all blur together. They all blur together for me. Oh my. Uh, this one had uh, Mark Dukakis, I believe that's Iron Chef guy. The yep, the chairman from uh, Top Chef. Yep. Iron Chef. Top Chef is a completely different chef. Iron Chef. Iron Chef. Ah. Mm. Too many chef shows. Uh, anyway, he was really good in it. Also, it had a uh, homegirl from uh, Billions. Nice. Uh, she was the adjudicator. The one from, like, the table coming in to, like, make the big decision. Yep, yep, yep. And the ending of that movie, kind of intense. Uh, felt bad for John, but that's kind of like a third, third line through this whole franchise. I was gonna say, you feel bad for John since it's from the jump. Yeah, but, uh, anyway, then, uh, next up, a movie might get a reaction out of you that I hadn't watched yet. Uh, Deadpool 2. Wait, you've never seen, you hadn't seen Deadpool 2 until now? Mm-hmm. What? Well, part of the reason why is some of the big points got spoiled to me, like who dies. I honestly don't even remember. Uh, oh, Vanessa, right? Vanessa dies? Vanessa and, like, all most of the X-Force. Oh, yeah. Which Bill Skarsgård was surprised to see him and uh, Brad Pitt. Colossus was fantastic. Yes, yes, he was. Finally got to show his uh, chops and let loose, and it was a big CGI fight, but him versus Juggernaut was awesome, and it had the kid who's everywhere now, the one who was the main kid, Russell, the uh, New Zealand kid. Uh, he's, like, everywhere, but he's a good actor, so I'm glad to see him everywhere, but I, enjoy I thoroughly enjoyed it. I knew like most of the plot points and everything going in, but still the ride itself was cool. Uh, definitely wanted to make sure that I saw it before I watched Deadpool 3 because really want to see that. But uh, the last one, my parents rented it online, so thought I'd give it a try even though I wasn't going to watch it in the first place. And that is uh, Beekeeper. What's that? It's a new Jason Statham movie. Oh. It's uh, where there's a secret organization called Beekeepers that uh, have to thin out the hive when they go bad. And uh, he's a former beekeeper who's got a personal interest. And it's just one of those, like, you know, retired special forces dude goes off when someone close to him is hurt uh. or dies. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know that type. But also surprisingly in it as, to, like, the lead cop, because all these movies have to have a lead cop, is Allison from... Uh, uh, Umbrella Academy. Oh, cool. And she's still got that, like, air of, like, bitchiness to her, but she's more likable in this version. I mean, it's not hard to be more likable than Alice. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's also got, uh, Kate Stewart from Doctor Who. Oh, who? Cool. Jeremy Irons. Nice. Nice. Uncle Scar slash Alfred. But the, yeah, but the main villain of this movie, believe it or not, is Josh Hutcherson. Really? Peter. Huh. Yeah, he, he plays, like, an evil, douchey tech bro who's earned billions that makes sense uh, okay yeah he's come a long way from zathura <laughs> <laughs> and you know so has kristen stewart yep also true we forget that she was in that she was the older sister right the babysitter yeah okay she wasn't a, she wasn't older sister she was a babysitter okay no there was this weird yeah because there was this weird like thing where josh was into the babysitter but he was like 13 and she was like yeah and, and and she was in his older self that came in as the astronaut right yeah why do i remember so much of this movie <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> just space age Jumanji, man. I mean, it literally is just space Jumanji in space. It is, but it was like, fun. It was fun, and I believe it was John Favreau's directorial debut. Nice, but uh, but yeah, so it was okay. It was, I'd give it around a seven-ish. Um, as far as action movies go, it did get quite cliche at times, especially the end, like right out of an '80s action movie. Uh. But uh. There were some really good parts, and the action was really good. There was an intense scene with a truck and an intense scene with an elevator. That's all I'll say. Cool. But, uh, yeah, it's mind-numbing action. Jason Statham doing what he does best. And then... Lastly, for something completely different, an album that I have been looking forward to finally came out okay. this week of recording. And that is, uh, it's called In Search of the Antidote, and it's by the artist called Fletcher. Mm. Didn't know Darth put out an album. Good for Darth. No, different Fletcher. All right. <laughs> uh, she is, um, this is her second album. Her first one, her big hit was, uh, Becky So Hot. Um, and it, it's a song about how, uh, 
your ex is with somebody, but you're also attracted to the somebody that, that they're with. So you're like, shit, I don't know if I should be pissed or, or not. Or both. Yeah, that that's what that song is about. Um, Jay, you said that you've been getting into uh, TikTok. Yeah. Uh, if you've <laughs> ever heard about the whole like TikTok lesbian drama that went on a few years ago. I have not. She was involved in that. Ah. Uh, she was also one of the like indie artists that got uh, completely screwed with the whole uh, Universal Music Group. Oh, uh, Universal banning all their music off of TikTok? Yeah, she was one of the indie artists that got hit hard on that. Dang. But uh, in this new album, she's uh, talking like it's an unfiltered raw and like desperate way to uh, attempt to find joy and to find like the antidote to life. And uh, also her trying to find like what is the antidote for what's going on with her. Because in 2023, not only has she dealt with heartbreak, she's also dealt with battling Lyme disease. Yeah. Very similar to Avril. Huh. But uh, it seems like it was one of those cases where, like, uh, doctors don't take you serious. <laughs> and uh, she didn't know what was going on with her for the longest time. And so this is, in the end, though, it's an optimistic album about, like, trying to find the joy and, like, all that in life when shit's just bad also some love stuff here because her stuff is that she does like pop rock not pop punk but more just pop rock with high levels of pathos and she does not hold back so does that mean you can't listen to her music and drink soda at the same time what pop rock soda oh, oh. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but anyway album's really good i really like it might even be in my top of the year uh, i suggested if you like pop rock stuff um but that's it for me you know i've always been too much of a you know, I've never tried eating pop rocks and drinking soda at the same time. I, I know it's an urban legend, but I've always been too scared to do it. Uh, I think I, I didn't swallow it, but I think I did uh, try it once. Pause! I, Damn. I was literally pausing to try to find a way to best say it, and there's no real way to say it. <laughs> you try saying it. Without a pause moment. You could have included the Pop Rocks part first in it. That way they know you're not talking about... You know. Yeah. There is a better way to say it. Probably. But anyway, <laughs> it just makes the Pop Rocks more active. Ah, uh, anyways, um, I, I, oh, the future mm. album just came out recently in, ter um, in terms of music that I listened to that uh, came out relatively recently out of this recording. Pretty solid. There was a, there was a, so everybody's talking about the fact that Kendrick Lamar was on a song with it where he actually dissed both Drake and J. Cole. So that was cool. Um, nice. but yeah, Tony, well, uh, what have you been up to mm, other than going deeper and deeper down the Mega 10 rabbit hole? Well, just entertaining my time with the, just my usual rabbit holes when I get either invested in or something or reinvested in something after a period of dormancy as you do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I'm uh, I might be tempted, might being the key word, folks, into rubbing myself into another gotcha game. Oh no! Oh no! Yes, Shin Megami Tensei has a uh, mobile game called Shin Megami Tensei Liberation D2, hmm. where you can roll uh, the famous demons of the Mega Ten series at different star rarities, and you can also fuse them, by the way. So are there different star rarities of um, of He Ho, everybody's favorite mascot? I don't know. There has to be. He's like he's like the poster child of Shin Megami Tensei demon. For those of you who don't know, He Ho is Jack Frost because that's what he says all the time. Yep. Oh, it's not just him. There's also Jack O' Lantern. Oh yeah, that's true. Parents. That's true. They are brothers. They are Jack Bros. And then you do you know about the third brother? The King Frost? Does he count? No. There's another that's Jack. A, oh, apparently there's a uh, Jack. The, uh, Jack the Ripper. <laughs> oh, okay. I guess Jack that. The... I guess that counts. Is he Ice Jack? No. Oh well, technically no. Jack Frost is Ice Jack. I don't. I don't know what he is. All I know is his existence, and that's it. Okay. I've also been considering of checking out some other stuff within the Mega Ten franchise as well, like possibly Soul Hackers 2. I've been thinking about it since I've kind of been like, you know, re-exploring Mega Ten stuff now that I've officially gotten into Persona. And I would, I, I, I'm one of those rare cases that was into Mega Ten first and then like fell out of Mega Ten just because, well, not for any particular reason. I just haven't played any Mega Ten stuff in a while. And then Tony finally succeeded in getting me into Persona after years of persistence. Mm -hmm. The many, many years of persistence. But, Thank you. Yep. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, so. but I think there's one thing that we may have mentioned before, but I completely for we completely forgot about it. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Question. It's something that we watch on our homie hangout. Mm -hmm. 
you know, a special interest of mine that I've been trying to really get these guys into for a very long time. That into the world of Super Sentai. So. Oh, right. We never mentioned this. Yeah. We have been watching uh, Boom Boonger. Yes. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Yes. Uh, so for the folks at home, uh, Bak- Bakulage Sentai Boom Boonger is the newest Sentai that's out right now. It is about, it's a car themed Sentai. It's very comedy heavy. <laughs> You can look up the suits online. They're ridiculous, and that's the point of ridiculousness. The villains are ridiculous. Our heroes, to are to some degree, are ridiculous. We have classic monsters of the week becoming just random objects again. We have just they're also they're, 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 they're also a delivery company, a la Planet, Planet Express. Yes, who works with a robot from space that is obsessed is voiced, with making curry. Yes. Who is voiced by Ash Ketchum's Japanese voice actress. AKA, who also a- AKA in- Satoshi in Japanese. Yes, exactly. Yes. This show is hilarious. We are only introduced to our uh, three main Te- rangers so far. Technically, we were introduced to Orange, but he's not. we haven't seen him in suit yet. Yes. And we were also introduced to uh, Boone Black, who isn't in suit yet, but he'll be in suit uh, in episode five. We only watched up to three episodes at this point. We might let you guys know how our progress is doing every so often but we like the show so far oh yeah it's, pre- it's pretty great it because <laughs> my years of sentai but the more important thing is for the homies here what their thoughts on the show so far well this is my like second time watching a sentai series week to week because i actually i watched uh i watched lupat week to week and i really enjoyed that one um for obvious reasons that'll never come to america considering america's current political climate uh yeah and the fact that they're no longer when you're doing sentai footage yep yep but uh mm-hmm. th- that was cool but yeah I, I really enjoyed this one it's really funny uh i actually i actually do like the suits a lot even the ridiculous wheel helmets they look much better in action than they do in the stills mm-hmm. also i like the like the hot wheels kind of like aesthetic they have like the little mini hot wheels cars and the beginning of every episode is literally one of those little spin around toy commercials yeah although to be mm-hmm. fair that megazord looks really cool i would buy that toy it is actually really cool and from what uh i've seen online rather simple to work with oh, cool. as a toy and as someone who is a collector of uh of merch from uh tokusatsu i would be uh kind of an expert on that nice Not to the degree of yeah. Of, but I hear you. but yeah i enjoy it i enjoy it a lot i'm enjoying it the helmets are still kind of iffy to me but the comedy <laughs> really good the action's good i'm really enjoying it so and i kind of like the twist that uh the two extra rangers they're not like keeping it secret or anything we just like know who they are yep like they're in it since like day one mm-hmm. they're but, just uh, more like background characters right now yep, yep. Um, i think my this is my this is my second time watching a uh, a like toku thing in general like on a regular basis sub ironically enough the other one was common rider drive hey drive is not bad drive is awesome no, no it is i was just saying that it's ironic that the the two ones that I've watched. What, are vehicle based? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm enjoying it so far. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And one thing that made me uh, really appreciate this show does it's one thing that I knew Jay was going to like is the sign of our villains, the Hashilian. Mm. These bumbling idiots. <laughs> they remind me a lot of Team Rocket. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also enjoy that like when the when, when the villains get like destroyed, they get yeeted out like a like a Smash Brothers game. Yep. Which speaking about video games, also that weird little rainbow road. Oh yeah, the Mario Kart shit. I love the Mario Kart shit. Before the uh, mech fight. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because the whole point of the Hashilian scaring the ever-loving piss out of humans is they want Yasli. Which is basically Monster Inc. batters. Yep, so they wanted to just scare humans so they could power... (laughs) The monsters of the week. And then when the monster's destroyed by just being noped out of existence, because uh, when the Boom Boom Drews do their finishers, they actually do the uh, nope sign. Yep. Just mm-hmm. the- yep, with the circle and the line through it. Yep. So, and then when it's destroyed, all the gasoline would come out, and Yarukar, an actual car entity, gets so revved up, eats all the gasoline, and just yeets himself into Rainbow Road to just try to beat the shit out of the Boom Boom Drews vehicles. It's yep. great. Yep. 
it's fun. So uh, it's a good time. It's a good time. Mm -hmm. All right. So moving on from screen time, we're going to jump right into trailer talk. That is the segment of the podcast where our boy Brian here has gathered together six, count them six, new trailers out of the recording of this podcast episode. And he has gathered them all together for you guys over on YouTube in a playlist you can find down in the description below. And with the magic of editing, we shall be back shortly with our rapid fire thoughts on said trailers. So until then, please enjoy this word from our non-existent sponsors. And we're back. All right. Another really good uh, batch of trailers there, Brian. Thanks. Definitely enjoyed those. Uh, really excited for the new season of Doctor Who. It looks a lot of. It looks like a lot of fun. Indeed. Looking forward to seeing what uh, Eric brings to the table as the new Doc. And, um, uh, Millie Gordon, I believe that's her name. Yep. I'm getting like oh, yeah. I'm getting like Rose vibes from her without like the the romantic part. Yeah. I, I dig it. Uh, some other fun trailers. The uh, Herald and the Purple Crown looks fun. It reminds me a lot of Chalk Zone. I loved Chalk Zone as a kid. Apparently, it's based upon a uh, children's book. It looks like a it looks like a real children's book. Mm-hmm. Zachary Levi. Yep. Uh, uh, I'm super hyped for Beetlejuice too. Oh yeah, indeed. I mean, Jenna Ortega is just becoming one of my favorite up and coming young actresses in general. Oh yeah, and now she's uh, become a part of the Burton family. Yeah, I mean, you know, she cemented herself with Wednesday, so. Yeah, and it's cool to see all the uh, older people coming back, minus a uh, Alec Baldwin for obviously. obvious reasons. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, no shots fired there. Uh, uh, had to, had to. Uh, well, see, the problem is that shots work. Yep, unfortunately. Anyways, moving on. Um, uh, Dinner with the Family. That one's probably, like, the one that was the most meh out of all of them. Or Dinner with yeah, the Parents. But I felt like I had to include it because anytime there's, like, a big internet person, we try to include it. Yeah, to show support. Yep. Uh, one... To be fair, some of the, the best stuff in the trailer were him and the iconic Carol Kane. Yep. Well, uh, what 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 else was in there? Um. Uh, Penguin. Oh yeah, Penguin. It's about damn time. I've been looking forward to this show for a while. Colin Farrell. Mm -hmm. Uh, Colin, Colin Farrell's Penguin was some of the strongest parts of the Batman. Mm -hmm. I know it's Batman, guys, but I, I I like making the joke because I heard on Comic Pop one time that the whole reason that Batman and Spider Man both had a hyphen in it and why Batman started with a hyphen in it was because uh. The original creators thought that if they didn't put a hyphen in it, people would pronounce it like Spider-Man and Batman. Because, you know, both original creators were Jewish. Mm -hmm. But, uh, there wasn't a lot shown, but he just oozes presence. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm just waiting to see him with an umbrella. Or at oh, least, yeah. or at least a monocle. Indeed. And, uh, I'm interested to see Alex. Yep. See how he does. Outside yeah. of uh, Runaways. Yeah, definitely intrigued. It's gonna, it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be dope. Uh, what, what else was in that batch of trailers? Uh, the last one is the Elizabeth. Mo yeah, that one looks cool. Uh, I, Brian hit the nail on the head with the, the uh, like, elevator pitch description. It feels like Heart of Stone meets Killing Eve, which we enjoyed Heart of Stone. It's not one of, it, it, yeah. it wasn't like one on, on the higher end, but it was still pretty fun. Oh, yeah. And Elizabeth Moss continues to make her trademark Elizabeth Moss face. Indeed. And, uh, the interesting back and forth between the two. Women. Like, Elizabeth uh, Moss is a, is one of those actresses that I will always know because she always makes the same face. Like, it's one of those people. Um, I hadn't seen, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Invisible Man. I, she makes the same face in that as well. But, like, add a bit of terror into that. Okay. The movie is actually really, fantastic. really Fantastic. It is fantastic. I've heard good things. I just haven't gotten a chance to see it. Oh, yeah, no. If you ever get a chance, you definitely should. It's very good. But the show looks interesting. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, it's FX. Um, FX has been putting out nothing but bangers recently. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So, you know, and definitely on the radar. I'm glad to see, I'm glad to see that they're all going uh, on to uh, Hulu. Yep. No, that Hulu, that Hulu, that FX Hulu deal has been great. Mm -hmm. Like, we got Shogun out of it. We got Feud. Mm -hmm. Two shows that are, you know, kind of staples for us at the current moment. Even though we like to watch them in chunks because we don't like cliffhangers. And it's been a hot minute since we've seen you. Well, Feud, I think we're only like three episodes behind. Oh. Yeah, okay. we're actually not that far behind Feud because Feud also took a break, remember? Mm-hmm. Oh, right. It just feels like forever because we haven't watched it in a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Uh. So is that it? was that it for the trailer? Yep. Well, all right, now folks. For something completely different. Now it's that moment y'all you all have been waiting five. It's time to talk about Girls Five Ever, <laughs> which which you have to say it like that, just like Totally Killer. It's Girls mm -hmm. Five Ever. You gotta you gotta take yourself back to the early two thousands. 
the early aughts. Girls but yeah, so I enjoyed the fuck out of this show. Same. Like, legit. This is one of those shows that we watched together that I don't think we have shared as many laughs ever. And I mean, like, ever. Yeah, ever. I mean, there were <laughs> at least two times that I can remember where we had to pause it because we were laughing. I, the first one, I legit stopped it, was laughing, and was like, all right, I have to pee. I have to pee. Yes. Yes. I hurt from <laughs> laughing at that. My stomach hurt. I, my ribs were killing me. Like, it got to the point where I had gotten up to use the bathroom, my mic was muted, and I was still laughing. I was like, oh, I can't move. I can't move. I hurt. I hurt. Oh, man. And then, and then, you used the bathroom, came back, and you were still laughing. Yeah. Because it's so funny. Oh, my God. Was it funny? And I mean, like, I think it's... I think this show hits a particular chord to people of our generation because yeah. we all grew up at the height of girl slash boy band mania. Mm -hmm. You know, the Spice Girls, Britney, Christina, Instinct, 98 Degrees. Mm -hmm. But by then, new they're kids making, on the block were old kids on the block now. And they're making all the references that we understand. Yep. Yep, yep. And even, like, all the obscure inside baseball references that if you were really into pop stuff, you would understand. Mm hmm Uh, but yeah, it was really fun. And most importantly, the music actually slapped. Oh, yeah. Like, yes, well, a, I mean, a lot of it had, like, you know, dumb meme lyrics in it, but, like, the music, for the most part, like, really, especially, like, Ben's Not Break, that is a legitimate banger. If I, uh, if I remember correctly, I could be wrong, but if I remember correctly, I remember hearing a while ago that that uh, Sarah Barras was actually working on the music as well. Nice. That makes a lot of sense. It was, it was some really good music. And I, I I love a lot of the like little jokey songs that were in it all in it all throughout as well. Like New York Lonely Boy. The one song yeah. uh, Gloria did on her own where she was talking about yeah. her romance. Any song yeah. involving Summer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I, you guys, I fucking love Summer. Oh. Summer is my absolute favorite character i said that from the jump and that did not change all throughout nope. like i i loved regina's mom in the mean girls episode you could go back and listen to that i talked about how much i loved regina's mom oh, yeah. and busy phillips did oh. not disappoint here at all either no she does not um and matter of fact she got better. She did. As the show went on. And then, like, uh, fucking Wiki. 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 Mm -hmm. Miss Leslie Wiggins. Oh, oh man. Oh, my God. Wiki was, oh my God. Wiki was the best. Now, here's my here's my question. Do you guys think by the end of this show, Wiki was satisfied? Or do you mm. think she'll ever be satisfied? I don't think she'll ever be satisfied. I do agree. Yeah. Especially the way that it ended up. Yeah. Uh, Renee Elise Goldberry. I believe that's how you say it. Yep. I did not know that she could be that funny i know right oh my god also, like i think the same can be said said for sarah Bar yeah right oh yeah. man sarah Barrell and sarah Barrellis was hilarious and then like i, I even love like the self uh self-referential humor like i'm not gonna write them a love song oh yeah i didn't even yep. catch that at first brian was the one who caught that and i'm like oh shit and then we just went into a like a list of Sarah Bareilles yeah. song. Yep, that was it. Yep, yeah. no, Sarah, Sarah yeah. Bareilles was fantastic. And the uh, funny thing is, is because this seems to be a running trend with us, and I'm glad to see it happening. Surprise Broadway star, because oh yeah, not only are two of our four leads Broadway stars, but the supporting cast includes multiple. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. freaking Scott, man. Yeah. Scott, the legend. Derek. Yep. And, and uh, Ashley. And one of the supporting char and one of the supporting characters is freaking Mayhem from the fucking Allstate commercials. Don's brother yeah. is Mayhem from Allstate. Yep. On that, we have, like, uh, random guest star early with Earth Season. Yep, the Property like, Brothers show up as big recurring yeah. characters. Yeah. And it was and, hilarious. Uh, oh, man. And uh, Tina Fey. Of course, because she, created. like, yeah, she co-created it. And she showed up as Dream Dolly. Yeah, as, like, or, Hallucination Dolly. Yeah. That was funny. Yep. Oh, man. Yeah, like, honestly, you guys, if you enjoyed 
if you enjoy pop music, if you grew up listening to pop in the early to late 90s to early to mid 2000s, I think you'll enjoy the hell out of Girls 5 ever. It's hilarious. Like it, it is. And uh, I just found out something mm -hmm. interesting that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Nicole's actress mm -hmm. is actually uh, one of the writers for the show. Oh. And she also worked on another darling of this podcast, favorite of ours, mm -hmm. One Day at a Time. Oh, I, oh man, One Day at a Time, gone too soon. Tony wasn't there for that era, but One Day at a Time was fantastic. Mm -hmm. It was a, like, Latino reboot of the Norman Lear classic One Day at a Time. It was great. Rita Moreno was the abuela in it. Awesome. Yep. Loved that show. Uh, but yeah, like, totally recommend it to anybody that, like, is just looking for something light and fun. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, you will die laughing. It's cringe, but in, like, the best way. It's very theater cringe. It's a very specific type of cringe. Uh, I'd say a good chunk of the cringe, they actually in universe call out. Yep. Mm. Also, uh, a fucking Adam Devine is hilarious. What? I always think that it's Adam Devine who plays Kev because they have very, he, him and Bumper have very similar personalities. Who plays you Kev? Really tell what who plays oh. Kev? Um, dang it, looking it up. Uh, Andrew, uh, Reynolds. Andrew Reynolds. He's fucking hilarious. Comedy. He is. And, uh, you know he's one of the Broadway people. Is he really? Yep. He was he was Elder Kevin in Book of Mormon. Ha huh, ha huh, funny. He plays another Kevin. Yep. But yeah, so um that's pretty much all we can say spoiler free. Uh really enjoyed the show. Definitely recommend it. Uh for this one, I think we're gonna go character by character. But first, obviously, spoiler countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Leave now or forever hold your peace. Uh -huh. Alright, so yeah, let's go character by character. We're starting off with Summer because God, I love Summer. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. So, I have a soft spot for airhead characters. Mm -hmm. And Summer is so dumb, it's precious. Indeed. He's like, I love how when she first started off, she was just like, Yeah, I wasn't really allowed to sing because uh, I would often lose track and just copy whatever else I heard. So, really, all I did for our songs was end off in short feminosity phrases. Uh, I love Summer. <laughs> Indeed, same. I think out of all the cutaways, Summer has some of my favorite laugh out loud ones. <laughs> oh, the biggest the biggest one came from her. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, it was her was Oh okay. Okay. So this one was the one that fucking so it sold us on the show and it fucking killed us. So we find out that like the girls flopped after their first album because their second album came out on uh in the year two thousand one on September tenth and they released single was don't fly don't fly planes into my heart <laughs> uh, so <laughs> it was so out of pocket so wrong we had to die of laughter we <laughs> <into> <laughs> ourselves and then be right back where we are now we had to be we had to be we had to be one because we were like there's no way they just fucking said that you. <laughs> oh no! And just the way Summer said it, like just the why did it have to come out on September tenth? Yeah, and she didn't even say what it was. Just the cutaway of <laughs> them singing. And they were in Stuart and outfits and everything. <laughs> Summer still had some really great cutaway moments, like her little, her, her and Kev's chastity song, the waiting song. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. yeah. oh man. Uh, by the way, found out that uh, Kev uh -huh. is not only, is not only, like, been in multiple Broadway, he's also a voice actor. Oh. Oh. Uh, cool. Two, two of the most recognizable things that you would uh, recognize him from is, uh, he was young Zorro in the Four Kids dub. Oh, shit! Huh. And, most recently, he's the voice of William in Invincible. Oh, what? shit! 
What? <laughs> Yo. Holy shit. Speaking of which, when does that finish? Because we got to watch that so we can cover it. Yeah. Uh, coming soon. Not very, very soon. Pause, but also nice. Nice. No, uh, pause, but. But yeah. Uh, so summer, summer is great. From her little girl boss era. Oh, yeah. To discovering that she, her uh, fashion, primarily focused on what uh, the men in her life basically said, you should dress like this. Although, I'm not gonna lie, I'm with Tony. I feel like, I feel like her Randy look, where she looked like end of Grease Sandy, pretty yeah. nice fit. Yep, but then she decided, yeah, John's right. Or whoever told me, yeah, they're right. I should dress like how the men in my life treat, like, should tell me to dress. <laughs> Upon the realization, I'll just burn all my clothes. <laughs> Instead of sock, and just make my own shit. <laughs> she just ran. She ran around the hotel. Everything from the loofahs in the hotel room. <laughs> she was like, yep. "Quick, lady, give me all of your mini sewing kits. I'm gonna make my own clothes." Just running around mm -hmm. naked. Yeah. Also, one of my fa one of my favorite things it, very early on in the show was when Summer was trying to figure out how to make money, and she was like, "Wait, like, what am I good at?" Um. Yeah. Twirling, kicking. I, I, I'm really good at makeup. Huh, I wonder what I could do. And I was like, stripper? And, and then cut to later. And she was out here just straight up killing it. And I love the I love the DJ at the club. She he was like, and here, out of her own empowerment, completely by her choice. Welcome to the stage, Summer, her actual name. <laughs> You and then that her actual name okay uh, and then yeah. and then it totally came in handy when one of her simps turned out to be the teleprompter guy at jingle ball mm -hmm. and I, yeah. I i love how whenever summer has to spell anything out she has to give word examples for every single letter that's g as in girls five ever and i as in herbs five ever uh, yeah. oh my god it's great love summer but also mm -hmm. the cool thing like really cool thing about Summer is she's like weirdly a savant. Yeah, she she she, she she's that she's that she's that she's that funny trope of the idiot savant where she's like super dumb, but in particular niche instances she's very very smart. Like when she like, when she keeps quoting the different things she hears from her like like queer audiobooks, all her little gay fun she, facts. Yeah, cause she like I think she said she read like three books and. At like double speed. Yep. And but, but yeah, she and then kept spouting it to the back door. <laughs> Caroline's like, ca 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 yeah, like fucking fucking Gloria was like, all right, all right, cool, cool. I, I, I get it, babe. Thank you. I know. I'm gay. I know all these things. And then later she was about other stuff. And then at one point was just the offhand joke of, uh, I'm going to go learn math. Oh, uh, oh man. Her whole arc of learning to, to make a salad. That was hilarious. She was like, I know you guys put me on salad duty because you didn't think I could do it. Well, guess what? Here, I did it. Oh, I lied. I walked five miles all the way to a Chili's and seduced some poor desperate teenager into making it for me. Are you happy now? I don't know how to make salad. But then later on in the season, she actually does work. Yep. But she dumps like a whole container of dressing into it. Yep. Which, to be fair, sometimes sometimes it's just what you need. Yep. Uh, and then well, I mean, and then she passes on her knowledge to Kev, and Kev just like, look, Stevia, it's your boo. And Stevia's like, yeah, yeah. Just looking at her. Good that child. Good God. Oh man, she couldn't even get into cringe house. Damn. Who definitely belongs in the cringe house? You. Well. My house is a cringe house. That's not important. But I can't believe they referenced hype houses. Yep. Yeah. Oh man. Crazy, right? The only Those things are ridiculous. The only the only content house that is actually still active nowadays that I can think of is offline. Uh, right? It's offline counts. They were a house. I don't, are they still a house or are they just a content brand now? I think they're just a brand. Cause I know yeah. they did live all in the same house at one point. Like back when it was like the originals, like Pokey. Val and Toast and all them. But I think that started to like break up at least physically. Yep. After uh, Toast and Lily broke up. Yep. But uh, there was this one TikTok hype house that like refused to die. This one had like Charlie D'Amelio in it, I think. Mm hmm at one point, but it was just like, and uh, what's her face? The baby Ariel was a part of it while. Oh man, my, my favorite thing about that whole hype house thing was like, wait, so she's just gonna live there? Uh, duh, Don. Mm -hmm. That's how houses work. 
Oh my god, Summer. Which I... You know, it sounds it sounds uh, okay in uh, concept, but could you imagine having to live in a house where you're working twenty four seven and you're around people working twenty four seven? Right? You don't know whether your moments are actually like regular moments or being recorded on camera. That's a lot of pressure. Also, there was this one hype house that was like. Uh, all of the members were being sponsored by, like, I think it was, like, Monster or some energy drink company. So, they were constantly drinking it, and you could constantly just see it in the background because of how much they were drinking. Oh, man. So much caffeine. But, but yeah. yeah. So, that's, it, so, that's it, Summer and all her shenanigans. Well, she also had, like, her whole self-discovery in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And she also had, uh, like, the whole stuff with Kev where she thought Kev was cheating. Yeah, which, that's still kind unresolved we don't know if he's actually gay yeah. or not yeah because he basically told gloria oh you're just gonna do the same thing you know what to bury all those feelings you need to do an elaborate hobby like how, i do oh, crap how about taxidermy with historical uh, iconic historical moments i even got you mm -hmm. raccoon poison and look at that a top hat and a little mini Aver uh and a mini abraham lincoln beard i wonder what you could use that for you'll thank me later which, oh my god, in the end, the next season, she did accidentally end up with a bunch of dead critters. She did. I wonder if she's going to use those next season. Is she going to pose Mandy the Dead Fox as Richard Nixon, apologizing oh, that he is not a crook? Because, <laughs> I mean, think about it. The fox is a tricky animal. What better animal to pose as Tricky Dick? Mm -hmm. True, true. But uh, also, the one other thing that I want to mention about Summer, mm -hmm. her parents. Oh, my God. Fucking, <laughs> fucking the janitor from Scrubs and Amy Sedaris. Yep. That was wild. And it, it's also just really funny because, you know, we saw Amy Sedaris relatively recently because she's been in Mando and stuff. Mm -hmm. Completely different characters. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they talk about their horror genetics and just <laughs> all the wild shit that they were into early in life. Which they're like, even Winky was like, Summer, you said, you said your parents were, your parents were virgins before they married. You were at your parents. Wedding. No, no, because they, they were like, wait a minute, wait. If if their if their song was, I forget what the song was. This came out in 1981. How could they have been married then? That doesn't add. That math doesn't math there. That shit. That shit was funny. Love that. Um. Well, it came out in 81, and you were born in 81. Yep. How does that make sense? And then they they got the wedding photo, and they're doing the obvious sitcom try to hide the bump thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they were like, enhance. It's like, ha, you were there. Uh, okay. So, yeah, that summer. Summer was hilarious. I also love the bit when she got into the MLM and then her teeth oh, yeah. became, like, massively glowy. And then <laughs> Gloria being a dentist was like, well, see, now your mouth will be permanently white and prob and more than likely everything all the way down to your anus. And then we just see a light coming out from under her dress. She's like, oh my god, Summer, are you not wearing any underwear? I burned all of my clothes, Gloria. <laughs> That leads to the question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> use her life. Also, she could. I, I, I guess she could use her asshole as a flashlight now. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. Well, <laughs> I don't well, do the it, seemed, it seemed to have died down by the finale. <laughs> Uh, maybe she learned maybe she learned to control it maybe that's like a new power now all she has to do is like <laughs> like <laughs> you, you know how like when you have to hold you know when you're like holding in taking a shit maybe that's what she has to do that's how oh she control and she has to <laughs> <laughs> oh it, it just hit me mutant power glow anus she's dazzler but her dazzle only comes out of her mouth and anus and uh Back. Probably badge too. Probably badge too. I mean, that brings a whole new, uh, whole new meaning to the phrase "light at the end of the tunnel." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll be here all week, the, folks. The drone that followed her everywhere. Oh yeah, the the the, the fucking the fucking tooth gummy drone. Did How did it find me inside? Yeah. I thought I hit unsubscribe. Uh, meanwhile, Gloria, that says unsubscribe, um, Summer. <laughs> and then when she <laughs> and then when she tries to call the hotline to cancel, it sounds like you said have sex with exalted Kevin. 
<laughs> if this is correct, please press one. And then at the end, the MLM thing saved their ass. Yep. She was like, tickets are just tickets are just too smart. Oh man, yeah. so good. Because that was one of the cool things about Summer's character. Is she always seemed to come in and help save the day. Yep. Mm -hmm. Summer. Everyone's just overthinking it. Yep. Meanwhile, Summer's underthinking is what saves the day for real. Uh, the only thing that I didn't like about her was the whole jazz thing. Which jazz? Oh, oh, the scat? Oh, yeah. She ruined the song again. That was completely unnecessary, Summer. She was just like, no, it's missing something. I, I can't. No, Summer. No, I'm sorry, Dawn. I have to. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was like, I quit music. Oh, poor, Dang. poor Pixie Jones. Pixie Jones. But moving on. Okay, so ne ne next up on the list, I, th I think, I think the next we'll do is freaking Gloria. Gloria was hilarious as well. Um, just, just her, her joke about like you know her being obsessed with her, uh, her ex-wife Caroline, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. like you know realizing, wait, I've only been with one lady because I was so deep in the closet for so long. I never actually got to explore what life is about, which I. Think I think it's really cool because I constantly complain about like the this the stereotypical narrative of like you know your first love is the one kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I actually really did like this arc of like Gloria actually going out there and you know getting to have her hoe phase. Although I kept saying it and I will continue to say it. If you want to call yourself Ho Spice, spell it with an E. Yeah. That way it doesn't look like hospice when you write it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But uh you were talking about uh you were talking about oh shit brain farts. Gloria? Oh, you were talking about how you like the whole not the first love thing. Mm hmm And I like how they ended that. Yep. Where she thought it, she ended up going back to Gloria, and then Gloria just ends up with Boo from Orange is the New Black. Mm hmm Caroline. Well, well, Caroline ends up with, yeah, Boo from Orange is New Black. Well, Gloria comes back to Caroline. Yep. And she's just like, fuck you. Hey, well, wait, wait. No, I think I have one more. I, I know what you're doing. This is beneath you, Gloria. Fuck you, too. But it's actually the actress who played Boo. Like she's playing herself. Yep. And I, 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 I love it because like, you know, one of the one of the reasons that Gloria thought that Caroline was like still in love was because she continued to watch their old um their favorite show on Streamberry that that starred her that starred Boo from Orange is the New Black. Turned out she was watching the show with <laughs> Dr. Critter. Oh yeah. Yep. Oh man. Good shit. Good shit. I'm glad she found yep. the the elusive cigarette mommy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Personally, that one I felt was the hottest on her list. Oh, yeah. She did some impressive work, by the way. <laughs> she did. A rock head. She did. Like, damn, mm -hmm. good for you. Yeah, and her whole thing was, um, her whole character was kind of like a, like, less exaggerated version of, uh, she had a similar vibe to, um, Bridesmaid. Yeah. But not as annoying. Oh, yeah. Uh, sh she was a lot of fun. She was also kind of like, where Summer was the, uh, like, the moral compass, she was, mo for the most part, the voice of reason. Yeah. Which, uh, which I, I I like that a lot about her. She was able to call everybody out. And also, like, Gloria was the one member of the band that had moments with every individual member of Girls 5 ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's... So, we didn't even realize... Until much Summer. later, that Summer and Wiki had never been alone together. And apparently there was a story. Why. Yep. But, yep. yeah, as far as Gloria goes, the whole thing about her being a dentist, like, out of all the people, she's the one that had, like, the most success. Yeah, th yeah, the most actual success uh, post-girl band. Also, I love that her obsession with True Crime Murder Podcast actually came in clutch. Mm -hmm. I called that shit. I was like, wait a minute. I know what's going to happen now. I mean, also, she had been obsessing. On top of all that, she had also been obsessing about uh, Ashley faking her mm -hmm. death. Yep. Which I think uh, that also reminds me, out of all the songs that each of the individual girls kind of majorly contributed to, I think Gloria has the most hits because mm -hmm. Ben Not Break is a banger. VPE is a banger. Uh, Leave a Message Did You Love Me, I count as a Gloria song, which I think is probably the best one. Oh, yeah. That's, like, also their most serious one. Yep. Because it was dedicated to their friend Ashley. Yep. Who, who tragically died jumping off an infinity pool in Fa Vegas. Falling off of an, infi an infinity pool while drunk. It was apparently yeah. the leading cause of uh, death in pretty people in the year 2005. Which, mm -hmm. by the way, tying it back to another show that we've done, another, like, episode that we've done, mm -hmm. Ashley's actress was actually Broadway Gretchen. Oh, yeah. Man. <laughs> A 
updated Mean Girls Gretchen was the best. I love that Gretchen. Yep, so, yep, yep. She, so much more like depth. Homegirl from Love Victor. Yep. Uh, what? but yeah, uh, fucking. Story, it was great. It was kind of a weird. It was kind of weird how we had a, like an ongoing thing where multiple times we saw her shirtless but blurred. Yep. Oh yeah. Jesus Christ. Like, yeah. Like and she she, was, she would all she was also constantly whipping her titties out too. Like yeah. you remember that one time she was just like, yeah, I'll free a nipple right now. And then later on in the episode, she's like. Do I still have my Did I, Is my titty still up? No, no, no. I put it back. I knew better. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Oh, uh, crazy. Yeah, she she, uh, she was good. She was good. Shout out to the actress uh, Paula Pell. Yep. Oh, uh-huh. Is a former SNL member. Also, I like her. I like her friendship with the uh, with like the 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 Harry Styles stand-in dude. Uh, mm -hmm. Gary Williams. Yep. Yep. I think I think I his name was like Gray Gray Holland. Gray Holland. No. Yeah. Yeah. Gary yeah. Holland. No. It, no. It was Gray Holland, and then he changed his name to Mad Dog Williams. Gary. It was Gary Holland. No, I'm pretty sure it was Gray. No, Gary. I'm I'm looking this up now because I'm pretty sure it was Gray Holland. No, it was Gary. Hold Hold on. Give give us a second, audience. Hold on. And future Tony. Girls five Eva Gray. Yeah, it's Gray Holland. I was right. Mm, thought it was Gary. Oh well. Yeah, G R A Y Gray Holland. Mm. Yeah. Thought it was and, Gary. Uh, actually played by a uh, dude from a Descendants. Oh nice. wait, wait. Uh, who did he, who did he play? He what, played, uh, was it Jafar's boy? Oh, oh, it's Hook's son. Oh, okay. And also, apparently, he was in the reboot. Uh, he was in the reboot Gossip Girl. Ah, the shitty one. Yeah. Ah, cool. Cool. Yeah. Oh, it's because you don't recognize him because he was in Descendants two and three. Holy uh, shit! Huh? He was Sebastian in Legacy. Oh shit! Wait, what? Huh? Yeah. That's crazy. Wait, wait. Which one? Seb Sebastian was the Sebastian was the uh was was the, was the guy that was like into Lizzie, right? The vampire that was into Lizzie. I think. Am I remembering this correctly? I am googling it now. It said that he was in ten episodes. Uh, Sebastian is a over six hundred year old vampire. Yes. So he was the vampire that was into Lizzie. Who appears at the Salvador school and starts a relationship with Liz. Yep. Yep. I thought so. Yep, you called it. But yeah, holy crap. Huh, that's why he looked familiar. But anyway, and, oh, and now the fact that he has fox teeth. Yep. Makes that hilarious. Right? Vampire teeth well, to fox teeth. Yep. But had a really good dentist do it, so they look convincing. Yeah, they do. Yeah. I mean, she did make it. To t she did make it onto the top docs list for a reason. That she did. And I and I love how all her like all her facts like connected. I was like, wait a minute, I know exactly how she's gonna do this. Mm -hmm. And I was like, in order to properly fake somebody's death, you need good dental. Oh yeah, I was right. <laughs> Maybe I listened. To <laughs> Maybe I listened to too many true crime podcasts because I because like I've thought about this before. <laughs> I also like how one of the points even Wiki called out and she was like, wait, how do I know that? Uh, and and my, that, that was my favorite part when she, when she was like, oh, if you paid attention to uh, murders in Minnesota, you would have known that if you put so and such that you could make a plane fly by itself. And the summer's like, I was paying attention. And she's like, yeah. actually, I was paying attention. Uh, fucking, man, summer summer continues to be the best. But, uh, yeah, Gloria, Gloria was really good. Yeah, uh, had a lot of fun with Gloria. Her, her whole knee arc, yep. which told her like not to push herself. Yep. Which in the end ended with a banger song. And then like her little Kanye moment where she was just high as fuck off the purse. Yep. And then she was like talking out her ass like she was fucking John Lennon. Next <laughs> trick. Yep. How do you feel, God like? And then she ma and then she made a whole song with this abbreviation that spelled out Percocet. Yeah. All yeah. her random nonsense songs are hilarious. Yep. But but yeah, I do like how they went absurd with her drug use, but they never like went too far. With yeah, it. and they never turned it serious, which I'm glad because that would have really dampened yeah. the mood. Yeah, which the also, one that I do like. Sorry, it, it's all good, Brian. You say your thing, then I can get to mine because the thing that sticks out to me the most is the most stupid one for me. But I was just gonna say I do also like the kind of semi callback to that in uh, season three when she uh, starts doing coke from the bear. Oh man, the party bear! Uh, when she. Uh, I, 
I love when she hangs out with the assistant for Cassie England and she's like, hey, party. <laughs> she wait, shakes a little teddy bear. I'm just like, oh, man. But yeah, you were saying, Tony? No, yeah, one of the things that she was like watching a movie with uh, Caroline, she had a fucking song moment with the fucking uh, lady from the Columbia Pictures. Oh, yeah. Logo. Yeah. This bitch said, feed me like a horse. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it was so weird. You like a horse. I mean, it was a callback to remember when she was like, I want to, when, when she, when she like had a crush on that uh, PA and she, at the, at the yeah, music yeah. video and she was like, and she was like, Don, I want to buy her a horse. <laughs> yeah, but to have the uh, Columbia lady say, go ahead, Gloria, feed me like a horse. <laughs> it just paused my brain for a moment. I'm like, Huh? <laughs> well, I think I think the does the Columbia yeah, lady prefer su sugar cubes or carrots? I wonder. Or apples. Well, or apples. Also, how does it change with the fact that the Columbia lady uh, seemed to be the paid? Yep. Mm. So. But yeah, so um, so yeah, Gloria's whole arc was funny. Now let's talk about the real star of the show, as she would like us to believe, Miss Leslie Wiggins, mm -hmm. aka mm -hmm. Wiki Roy. I love how Wiki's story unfolded. Oh yeah. At first, we think she's the most successful one out of the group. She's the Beyonce. <laughs> Turns out she's been faking it this entire time that she killed geese at the airport. Mm -hmm. With a shotgun, no less. Hello. Uh, She's always been chasing that fame. Yep. At the same time. Yep. Like, like we found out that she did have a solo career, but it tanked harder than Girls Five ever. Yep. And like they, they rushed out the solo album so fast that she was like reading the lyric. Uh, they were handing her the lyrics as she was performing, and, and then. Well, she was getting the mood for music it's like we told you not to twirl her whole ass hanging out yep yep and uh her uh doing her uh like the MTV <gasps> cribs basically yep I, 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 I brought this huge mantle for all of my future awards. only one award and it's a Razzie and I heard I heard that uh I forgot who she said now so and so had had her bed look like a car so she uh, missed made it. A Oh it yeah, Miss Missy Elliott. Oh yeah, Missy Elliott. Has yeah, a it looks like a bed. No, it has a bed that looks like a car. Yep. It has a bed and then, that looks like a car. And then so she made I, she made a car that looks like a bed, which uh, just drives off. Yeah. What the fuck? Oh man, and, and also I love calling back to like you know Wiki turning around her whole ass is out. Girls Five Eva had a whole song about uh, tiny butts forever and how this uh, this will be a fad that everybody likes for the rest of time. Mm -hmm. And we here in the uh, here he, call. We, we here at the Channel no. Chasers podcast do not endorse said message. No, definitely not. <laughs> Uh, One of us was born in 92. So <laughs> it is very fair to say that I cannot lie. Like big butts and I cannot lie. Yep. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> but there were a lot of, there were a lot of like callbacks to like, well, not callbacks, but like call forwards, I guess you could say. Yep. Like, like when Summer accidentally convinced Wiki to walk out. Yep. And she mentioned like Justin Timberlake, Gwen Stefani, Beyonce, and Wiki's like, all people that are. Which, uh, which, 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 is, which is really funny considering Girls Five ever reunited, and within recent years, Gwen, St uh, no doubt, is performing at fucking Coachella. In Sync reunited recently, a few years ago, as of recording this podcast, and actually, or, uh, and so... actually, uh, and actually, just appeared on Justin Timberlake's album relatively recently. Nice. Which fire song, by the way. We can now, uh, we can now forget. We can now forgive Justin Timberlake for uh, for that shitty Man in the Woods album. Don't do don't do folk music ever again, Justin. Stick to R&B and pop. Mm -hmm. Is Destiny Child? Yeah. Now here's the here's the question about Destiny Child though. Which version of Destiny Child would reunite? Because if you guys are unaware of your Destiny Child lore, there was the original Destiny Child, and then there was the second version of Destiny Child with Latoya, and then there's the third er, version of Destiny Child with an even more unknown member whose name I can't think of off the top of my head. Did uh, because the first third member was Michelle. Right? No, Michelle was the third. No, Michelle was the recent. 
the most recent one actually. He was the most recent one. Oh god. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Beyonce. Because because Latoya was Latoya was in the second iteration. I can't remember what the original third member. I'm looking this up now. I don't know why. I, well, I don't know why I'm just talking out of my ass when I have Google. Continue to talk though, while I Google. But yeah, they they had several moments of that where it's like obvious nods to future events that will happen. Yep. And that was really cool. Yeah, that was fun. And that was the scene where we found... That was also the scene where we found out. The reason why Summer and Wiki don't talk is because the one time that they were alone, Summer accidentally convinced her to go solo. Yep. And that was the start of the decline of Girls 5 ever. Oh, man. And it's why Summer refuses to just be alone with Wiki. Yeah, because she's like, I don't want to mess up again. And then the one time that they are, she's like, shit, I did it again. But luckily, Wiki he has grown as a person and just basically use that as like I'm I'm weak. Oh, damn it! There it is. There I'm it is. I I found I found them all. I, there was apparently an even even another member that I completely forgot about that was after Michelle. So the members of Destiny's Child are of course Beyonce, Noel, Kelly Rowland. We know those two. Uh, L Latavia Robinson, which was the original third member. That's the one I forgot. Then there's Latoya Luckett, who ca uh who came after Latavia Robinson shortly. Uh, then there. There was Farrah Franklin, who I completely forgot about, who was only there for literally one song and then was replaced afterwards by Michelle Williams, which is the one everybody remembers because she was in Cater to You. Mm. There Did you. One of them die? None of them have died. They were all just forgotten. The only the only famous member of a girl group that died was uh, Left Eye Lopez in TLC. Yeah, RIP. And even they've gotten back together, minus. Obviously, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lisa. Yep. But yeah, so I, 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 I just want I just wanted to fill in that bit of pop lore considering that i'm a like you know i was like it's gonna bother me now but yeah so uh re really enjoyed it i i also loved like the reveal of wiki's non-tragic backstory because mm -hmm. yeah, all throughout she's been like oh my father left and my mother's in a home yep and she's been telling that story since season one yeah and, and, and then like you know th they find they finally go to maryland and like you know they they meet the Wigginses and like they're super nice. Both of them are there and then like uh, and then you know Wiki's mom is like Leslie, what have you been telling everyone about us? But come to find out, she's never lied. Just lied. She she me. she's just creatively told the truth. Yeah, like it just hit me. She said that her mom doesn't like to stay there. She likes to stay at the home. Yep, and and all and also she 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 mentions that uh, she. Uh, she has she had twin she has uh si twin siblings that are in and out of the hospital yeah they're in and out of the hospital because they're doctors yeah and i and i love that she, she's just like you know what doctors have you ever heard of and summer's like well your brother oh and your sister uh that was so good and then gloria mentioned dr oh yeah yeah dr critter and also they didn't mention gloria gloria's a doctor too yeah but, but yeah um and it's like the one thing where we found out that she jumped out of a yeah jumped out of yeah down. Yeah, she kept falling down. It turned out she jumped out of a plane skydiving. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. And then one of the most ridiculous reveals, I think, was that we found out that she went to Air Force Academy. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then, like, uh, we also found out that, like, you know, what really set in her competitive nature was the fact that she lost in Star Search. Yep. <laughs> Only... She came in second. Yep. And only to realize, oh, yeah, only to realize that Star... Uh, the, the one thing that we all, we all eventually realized, that Star mm -hmm. Search is rigged. Mm -hmm. And then she... Yeah. And, and then she... Totally not like American Idol. And then she looks at the... And then she looks at the list. She goes, Oh my god! I'm on a list with Drew Carey and Beyonce! Why did I say those names in that order. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Wiki's great. And also, I just love her friendship with Dawn. How, like, they, like, they slowly become best friends. And then, like, her her relationship with uh, Sean the Lunch Lord is genuinely sweet. Yeah, like, when we find out that Sean, like, we know IRL. Yep. Can belt it. Yep. Oh, man. Yo, God fucking killed Total Eclipse of the Heart. That was amazing. Oh, yeah. Indeed. And then when he helped, like and then when he helped pra them practice Big Pussy Energy, I was like, oh, shit, why isn't Scott part of the band? Oh, yeah. Exactly. And then when having he he uh, Mr. Holland yep. performing that song, too. Hilarious. That was great. I, lo I loved Gray Holland performing uh, Big Pussy Energy. That was fantastic. But, 
But yeah, having him just be a school counselor though. Yep. And I, I yeah. and I and yeah. I and I like I like that uh Will Wiki's like you know, where Sean was like, Yeah, you know, you don't you don't always gotta be famous. So, sometimes, you know, I I I realize it's not as glamorous as like being like a guidance counselor and she's like <gasps> You're below Scott? He's like, yeah, Scott's the man. He gets mail at work. <laughs> Which, by the way, brings us to the fact of uh, Wiki being with a lunch lord. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it oh, actually also, I love the t also, I love the title, by the way. I think that's sick. It's cool as hell. I am the lunch lord. But I think my favorite moment with him, though, was when she was calling him for his counsel about <laughs> cheating. Oh my god, that was hilarious. The home alone doorknob, and he's just like, all right, this is a little weird, but I did say you could call me about anything, so I do appreciate your honesty. And I mean, and then, I, I mean, I, I, I think I would forgive you, but like, I'd be sad about it. And I'd listen to Annie Lennox while in the bathtub and I'd cry. My friend would call me and ask me if I'm fine. And, you know, I, I'd say I'm fine, but I'm really not. And she's like, uh. but you would forgive me. Okay. And then later when she calls him, he's, he's just like <laughs> listening to Annie Lennox. And he's just like, oh my God, come on. You're not calling me after. All right. How? All right was it okay tell me how was it <laughs> but then she told him like well i just didn't do it because you told me you told you 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 told you 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 told you told me how it would make you sad and then i felt sad so i couldn't do it how did you do that are you some kind of witch <laughs> Like, if there's anything that she doesn't fully understand, this woman would blame it on some sort of sorcery yeah. rather than her evolving as a person. You know, to quote to quote another famous pop ballad, Wiki doesn't know what love is. She needs Sean to show her. Which also just, it clicked into my head. This is so weird that they got that actor to play. <laughs> right, because he played Bruno Mannheim on fucking. Well, it's not only that, but he's been several just tough, tough guys. Like, he's also known for the wire oh yeah i know and he's like known for all these tough guys and yet he plays this super chill like kind sweetheart like down to earth normal dude who also for the life of him cannot cook unless it's massive amount which i respect i would i would eat the uh, the, the 20 pounds of macaroni and cheese in that bathtub that sounds awesome hell clean the bathtub for sure yeah i was going right in that would be awesome right it would be a race to see what can finish the most. Oh man, no, you're on, buddy. Also, he just had like that. Yeah, the catering tray full of eggs. <laughs> and I love Wiki. She's like, Sean, eggs are easy to portion for two people. You just stop cracking after four. He's like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> also, a lot of her shenanigans are just her putting her own foot in her mouth. Yep. Hello. Oh man! And speaking not, of speak not just her good foot, I was, not I, her good foot, the bad one. I, I was gonna say, speaking of which, she has a whole foot fetish arc mm -hmm. where she is like rather proud of her good foot being like top tier on Wiki Feet. Yep. Which she has her own specific site called Wiki Feet that is separate from the actual celebrity Wiki ah, Feet. It's called Wiki. Wiki foot. Oh yeah. Wiki foot. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Wiki foot. Yep. Because it's only the good foot, yep. not her bad foot. Because she's ashamed. It's meant, to, it's meant to encourage women to highlight the body parts that they're ashamed of. Yep. I I I love that shit. Um. Also, I I love when like they go to the dance and then Sean is in his like you know his military regalia and she's like, wait, you're an actual lord? She goes, no, I did three tours in Iraq. It was traumatizing. Because <laughs> she said, oh, wow, really? Was it fun? I'm like, no, it was traumatizing. <laughs> and then just walks off. Yep. But also, back to our thing where they, where they do callback. Like, we had had that foot thing earlier on in the show. And later on, when she's, like, getting deep with Sean, she actually, like, brings it back up and shows him... The bad the foot. foot. And he's just like... He's just like, oh, yeah, yeah. it's okay. You know, he toes are, like uh, are like a basketball team. There's five of them, and some of them are just doing their own thing. See that white one over there? That's Steve Nash. Uh, uh, oh, man, I love that shit. Oh, God. 
god. Also, the fact the fact Wiki was wearing a Tim was wearing a Tim on her bad foot is just hilarious to me. The quintessential stereotypical New Yorker shoe, the Timberland. Oh mm. my god! And also, way earlier on in the show, where she had those three thousand dollar shoes and the heel got stuck in the bad foot. Yep. So she had to replace it with a Coke bottle. Yep. Oh. Uh, and going yeah. off. and she and she's hanging out with Max and she just she just breaks off the Coke bottle and starts drinking the soda. <laughs> yeah. What while, while, like, while Don while Don and while Don and Scott are having sex, she's like, "All right, Max, let's turn up the car." <laughs> <laughs> What was the thing that Max wanted to watch? It, it was it was some kind of it, oh, oh Chernobyl. He was watching Chernobyl. Yeah. Because he's a New York lonely boy. But, well, not anymore. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but the, but the second he found out he was gonna have a little sister, he's like, yeah, I want to play lacrosse. Well, I that, play lacrosse. Yeeted something at his dad in the face, and he's just like, and he's like, ah, oh, the fuck, Max. Well, there goes our New York lonely boy. That was fast. Yeah. Oh, good shit. Which, uh, now that's a yeah, good transition. Yeah. Moving on to the main the main woman herself miss don solano uh you know i, I realized don and wiki i think no 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 we know gloria's last name we don't actually know what summer's last name is i thought we did because we actually met her parents we met her parents but we didn't know what her last name was with kev like we know what her maiden name is but we didn't know what her like her last name was for a majority of the time when she was like you know married to kev because it was just summer and kev what's well, kev's last name yeah, what is it? We know that Kev has we know Kev has two middle Hamlin. names. There it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So she was Summer Hamlin. Summer Hamlin. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Cause it was bothering me. Cause I was thinking about it right now. Just like in real time. I was like, alright, so there's so there's Don Solano, there's Wiki Roy slash Leslie Wiggins, there's Gloria McManus, there's Ashley Splaz, and then I was like, okay, so now it's Summer uh Summer Hamlin. Anyway, so back to Don Solano. Uh, just want to point out real quick, because mm -hmm. we forgot to mention this. They all have a moniker. If you remember, oh yeah, uh, Gloria was the one that's always working. Yep, she was the hard. Yeah, she was the hard worker. Don was the uh, chill one. Summer was the hot one. Obs. Wiki was the fierce one, and ironically enough, Ashley, the one that died because of a hot tub, at, was the fun. One. <laughs> Makes sense. And that was her seventh or eighth girl group. It, no, it, no, it, it, it was her. Si it was her. It was her uh, sixth girl group at the time. Uh, right. right. Yep, yep. And I, and I, I love the transition because as we were fine, as we were like getting to know everybody in the very beginning, when Don was like getting the band back together, we get to Ashley and they're at a bench. And she's like, at a memorial bench. Uh, yeah. And you know they never did anything after they moved the bench. Now that I'm thinking about they, it, they just took oh the bench. They don't know what to do. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And uh, by the way, sorry, just a quick side note. Mm -hmm. I was looking at the cast because I was trying to figure out like Summer's last name. Uh huh. Found out. You know how for Young Gloria they had a different actress. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was uh Broadway Katie, aka Charlie Morningstar. Oh shit. <laughs> Oh, what? Shit. Charlie is young Gloria? So she's played two gay icons. Hell yeah. You go, Charlie. Yeah. Uh, the actress's name is Erica Henningsen. You go, Erica. You slay, queen. Mm -hmm. Continue to slay. One hell of an actress. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. But, uh, back to, uh, back to Don. Yep. I hope we get more expansion on, uh, on her brother. Because oh, yeah. he's really funny. Yeah. I like his back and forth with Wiki that he had for that extended period of time. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. where Wiki was dating a much younger man. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, younger men. Yeah. <laughs> younger yeah. men. And technically yeah and he's like wait a minute he has all the money he's young this does not add this is not computing the world does not make sense and then 48 for 48 oh my god oh uh, he was so, she was so she was so narcissistic that she wasn't paying attention at all that they were completely switching and like even while they were doing the thing he was like ma'am we are pranking you and she's just mm -hmm. like mm-hmm mm -hmm. and then also the i had sex with you no you didn't no and you just see you, you just see her doing this weird interpretive dance. No, she yeah. it looked like this bird is like doing bird shit. Yep. He was just doing a weird interpretive dance in lingerie and she was like, Yes, I've been told that my sex is very performative. And I'm just like, uh, all right, Leslie. 
But yeah, yeah, um, I do wonder, have we heard about like what Dawn's situation is with her parents? No. Well, we know that her parents, no, we know her parents are dead. We know her parents are dead. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, we know her parents are dead. And, uh, let's see. Her uh, father is alive. She's married. Yep. Uh, he Happily owned, married. He owned, like. he owned several businesses, including a crematorium. But yep. we never her brother. saw the wife. Yep. We know, we've never seen the wife. We also know, we all know have... her. I don't think the brother is married. Dawn herself is happy. Yeah. Yeah. Dawn is. Uh, yeah, Don oh, is married. I you were saying that. Yeah. Okay. Was... Yeah. Yeah. So. So. No. The. Okay. So we know. That I. I remember the brother said he's been divorced. The brother's been divorced oh, several. Uh, yeah. Several times. Uh, he has several. Yeah. Bi he has several businesses, including the restaurant which John manages and the crematorium. Mm -hmm. uh, the restaurant is actually a family business owned by her grandmother, who she made the song about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Both her parents are dead. Mm -hmm. So we. I, I don't think we'll get to know more about Don's parents unless it's like in flashbacks and stuff maybe we'll get to know more about scott's family yeah i would like to know more about scott's family also i hope that we get more more information on the fact that like the, the mascot from that one italian chain restaurant looks like don like i know it came back in the tabloid rumors but oh, i wonder yeah. i wonder if that actually has to do with something i wonder because this is actually one of those shows where the where the where, where the tiny jokes do come back into full plot lines yep so the, that'll be very interesting uh, but yeah, Dawn is like the writer. Yep. And uh, she wrote all the songs. Even got jealous of the one dude, Ray. Ray, who. And also, she she kind she a lot like Taika Waititi. <laughs> I, 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 I thought the same thing. I thought the same exact thing. Don't feel bad, Brian. I just didn't say it out loud because I thought it was a little racist. Yeah. Uh. But yeah, no, uh, I, I thought it was funny. And she like TV cheated with Ray when uh, she watched Totally Not Succession. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With uh, with Ray. And she saw the she saw the finale w w uh, with him instead of with Scott. And and like the ongoing catchphrase of the show uh, went on. Wow, y'all. Wow. Mm -hmm. <gasps> oh, man. Where the, the mischievous brother who always betrays them will he betray them yep yep will the son that goes rogue always uh the, will the son that yeah. always goes rogue go rogue again yeah he goes rogue in the maldives how'd you know that um you know, oh you know no big deal i just i watched the uh, ray had a buddy who's an editor and we watched the finale it's like oh, wow yo wow and then i like it where she's like well technically i don't know if it counted because it wasn't all there they hadn't done but, yeah facts I, and I, 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 and like it still sounded like sex she's like oh come on i could even, uh, I don't think it really counted. I couldn't even finish because the effects weren't done. Yeah. Oh man. Uh. Also, I, I like it's 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 just it, uh like I love the like the metaphor when like you know uh she tries to call she tries to call it summer for something and she's like hey at least I'm not emotionally raw talking it with our producer <laughs> watching it wa wa watching a TV show behind my husband's back. Mm -hmm. Oh, good shit, good shit. And then oh my god, oh my god. Uh, damn it, I forgot her name now. Now, but she also had probably one of my favorite like just one episode characters oh taffy england yeah where it's just like why don't you have any of the husbands on the oh oh kara oh yeah kara oh yeah kara. well yeah with the dad list it's just like because i'm afraid i'm going to fuck all the dads. And, and, and then scott and then, and then scott comes back later yeah kara fucks some of the dads but it's okay and then even later on he was like it's okay that you messed up i have a confession too and she's like you, you fuck kara, kara. <laughs> it's like no 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 oh i I bought this like three thousand dollar pair of pants, but they were tailored, so I can't take them back. No, I think it was a bike. It was a bike. Yeah, it was oh, a yeah. bike. It was a gravel bike. It was a gravel bike. Yep, yep. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, it, it was funny. Don also has uh, some of the best shitty songs out of the whole <laughs> show. Like the one she made with uh, Tina Fey, "Dream Dolly," was hilarious. Stronger than oh, the stronger than the best was hilarious, and it turns out the weird lady who lives in the closet was actually actually killed that song. Mm -hmm. And then the one song that she wrote, only to find out that it was just a copy of a children's song. Yep. A children's cartoon. Yep. And, and then when she tried to write a Christmas song, it was a horny anthem Whoa. based off of Wiki's horny Hallmark movie. Unintentionally based on Wiki's horny Hallmark movie. Yeah, about, about... Fueled by uh -huh. pregnancy hormones. Yep. About, about an elf doinking a lonely Mrs. Claus. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh. 
good shit. Also, all the pregnancy jokes too, like yep. the bump reveals. Yep. And, but then when she finally does it, and I called that shit right away. I was like, wait yeah. a minute, I know what's gonna happen. And I and I just got it now. Uh, like uh, the the guy's name, his name is Gray Holland, and you know it's like you know if you think about like some of the it British boys, uh, you got like Tom Holland, mm -hmm. and he's not British, but you know Christian Gray was a big kind of it boy within the the forty something mom demo. Mm -hmm. So Gray Holland. Uh, but yeah, so D Don was great. All right, so which, like, uh, uh huh. Which uh, by the way, funny thing is. Is uh is a uh, Christian Grey isn't British, but Jamie Dornham is uh Irish, I believe. Yep. Or Welsh. Yep. He's either Welsh or Irish. One of those. One of those UK offshoots. But yeah, she, she was just like the good. I like the fact that she was mostly like their uh like smart person until season three, where uh, she was like fueled by like pregnancy and stuff. So the other team members had to step in and like reel her in. Yep. Yep. Um, the fact <laughs> where at the finale she's trying to save them so much so that she just got anyone that she can. Yep. Be like, hey, help us! She even grabbed the, that poor therapist that was mid session. Oh yeah, Lenny Kravitz, Doctor. Lenny Kravitz. And he's, and he's like, no, I don't sing, but like the other Lenny, Lenny Kravitz, like the other Lenny, there was a uh, a time where I, I ripped my pants to the point where my penis popped out. Yeah. <laughs> Like, what the fuck? Oh, man. Al al also, I, I loved the little incident with, like, uh, with Tabby England. And, and it brought back the little thread with Dawn about how she disliked all their problematic songs. Oh, yeah. Like, Sweet and Low Daddy. <laughs> when are you gonna die? <laughs> Good lord. Oh. Yeah. Oh, man. And then in the end, she learned to embrace the yep. side of her. Yep, and then she joined in. It was great. It was great. I'm glad Rebecca Lobo didn't have to take over and do extra baskets. She didn't get to prepare. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. uh, that was one thing that I was surprised about. All the cameos. Right? Oh, man. Like, we didn't even... I hinted at it earlier, but we hadn't even brought it up. Yeah, Richard Kind. Oh, well, he yeah. Who, like, has literally been in everything. And as soon as I saw his face, I was like, it's Bing Bong! Yeah. Yeah. She's like, oh my god, you're Bing Bong. <laughs> Look, everybody's gonna know him as Bing Bong because Bing Bong made everybody cry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, takers in the form. Damn it, Bing Bong. But, uh, and I also love how that came back twice because Richard Kind was in the theater. Yep. And then, and, and then and the then cliffhanger the at the very end, she did, uh, yeah, Wiki did the thing. Well, yep. it also shows up when they're watching. Oh, yeah, the, the new episode of The Crown, yeah, where, where Wiki's song pops up. He's there. They're like, damn, he's really. Everything. What a work ethic. And then I I love that they did the callback because they they bring up because earlier before they talked about how, you know, their fame only got them into the small market of Fort Worth because it's not like uh, it's not like they got a sudden resurgence like Kate Bush after Stranger Things. Mm -hmm. And then it's just and then like, you know, her song shows up and they're literally like, oh, you got Kate Bush. Mm -hmm. And they want her to do a, new, a song for an upcoming Lady Garfield. Yep. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So who is the female equivalent of Chris Pratt that would voice Lady Garfield? Uh, That's the question. Hate, Amy, would it be that. Amy Poehler? Or or not uh, Anna Faris? I would say that, which is also kind of awkward. Yeah, I know. That's why I said it. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Cause yeah, I know. I I remember. I remember. I'm saying more to the general population. Oh yeah, but yeah. So I'm 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 really looking forward to this show. Uh, before we jump into final thoughts and ratings, let's go around. Who was everybody's favorite member of the band? Cause like every boy band or girl band, everybody has their favorite. Uh, so for me, I think it's pretty obvious. I'm a summer guy. Summer is my favorite. I love summer. Uh, Tony, what about you? Who's your favorite member of Girls Five ever? Mmm. Mmm. Summer. All right. We're both team summer here. <laughs> Brian, it's going to be unanimous. unanimous. All right. We're all in the summer <laughs> band club. Woo! We can't help it. She's just so lovable and dumb. Yo. Uh, all right. So, yeah. Final thoughts and rating. Uh, we'll start. We'll start with Brian. Mm. It's, I really enjoyed this. Like, it was a really good surprise enjoy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of hard to rate it because it is a comedy. Mm -hmm. Comedies are a little harder to rate out of 10, I'd say. Mm. 
I, I I think I have a good general idea of where I'd rank it. Huh. I have an idea do, too. Do you want to skip? Do you want us to skip you for now, and then I'll I'll go to me, and maybe well, me giving my my reasons will help you out a little bit. It's a little weird, but as of right now, I'm leaning towards like possibly an eight point five. Huh? Funny. Funny you should say that. We'll go to me. That's exactly what I would give it because for me, in terms of writing a comedy, it's about how much you genuinely laughed at the jokes, and mm -hmm. like a good majority of those jokes really fucking landed yeah. so like I, I i give it a pretty high score sure a lot of it was cringe but it was hilarious cringe mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. like we said before a lot of the cringe they actually call out themselves yep so i i give it a solid 8.5 i really enjoyed the show i am a fan forever for sure yeah um i will say or should i say five ever i will say that the way they were doing this show I was really telling myself that this was Netflix saving a Peacock show. So if it had ended like that, up until like the last five minutes, I was like, okay, this seems to be like a nice, their lives can go on, but we don't have to see any more of it. I would love to see more of it, but it seemed to be like they were tying everything up into the bow until they Kate Bush did. Yep. And now it's like, all right, Netflix, you better renew this one. Don't make us wait five ever. Mm -hmm. All right. So Tony, final thoughts and ratings hilarious nine done oh dang okay. it really got a good laugh out of tony okay well that pretty much wraps up girls five ever we had a blast it was a great show totally recommend it so brian mm -hmm. now we're gonna get a little bit more like in depth and theoretical with this next one we actually speculated about it a lot when we reacted to the trailer for it but tell the folks at home what we will be covering in the next episode of the channel Traders podcast well, we're going from a bunch of women reaching for the stars to a singular woman actually going to the stars. In fact, we are doing a constellation. But this space lady will not be interacting with a terrifying talking space spider. Nope. Rest in peace, Hanush. Mm hmm mm hmm Go watch that episode, you guys. It was fun. It's a good episode. Yep. All right. But yeah, we're looking forward to checking out Constellation. Th this was one that instantly sparked our interest when we reacted to the trailer. So I'm definitely looking forward to this show. And uh, this will be our second Apple show to cover on the podcast because we covered Monarch first. Still haven't heard anything about Monarch. Relatively okay. And I wonder if it was meant to be a one and done. Right? Speaking of but which, it, we got... Are, are we going to do anything about... I mean, this is kind of just us speaking out of turn, though. But we going to do anything about the new Kong movie coming up? Because that comes out at the end of the month like the i don't know the kong godzilla movie comes out on like because, the 29th uh, as a like peek behind the curtain spoiler alert uh on our schedule after constellation is the said invincible oh yeah so we can't skip invincible never mind sorry kong i'll talk about you in scream time i guess yep all right so yeah look forward to that we will see you guys next time uh it's time for us to close the curtain <laughs> hopefully uh we won't it won't take us five ever to get you the next episode but until then we'll catch you later Peace.